Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to add additional fractions together. But in this case, when we add fractions together, we notice they're of the type 2 fractions. The type 2 fractions mean that the smaller denominators evenly fit into the largest of the denominators that are present. So for example, here the larger denominator is 24, the smallest is 12, and 12 goes evenly into 24 two times. Here we can see that 6 goes evenly into 18 three times, and here we can see that 15 goes evenly into 45 three times. And here we have three denominators. 30 is the largest denominator, and the other two evenly fit into that largest denominator. And here 48 is the largest denominator, and both 12 and 16 fit evenly into 48. So now we're going to show you how to add those fractions where you have the, the smaller denominators fitting evenly into the largest of the denominators there. So what you're going to do is you're going to write new fractions. The one that goes unchanged is the one that has the largest denominator. So this becomes 24 and this becomes 7. And then you write the fraction here 5 and 12 but now what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make the bottom fraction here, this first fraction, equal to 24. So we ask ourselves the question, what must I do to 12 to make it into 24? And the answer is, I need to multiply that denominator times 2, because 12 times 2 is 24. But if I'm going to multiply the denominator by 2, I must also multiply the numerator by 2, otherwise the fraction has changed. Now I can see that the fraction has not changed in value. It simply is rewritten with a new denominator. So now I can write this as being 5 times 2, which is 10, over 2 times 12, which is 24. And then we still have 7 over 24. So all I've done is rewritten the first fraction so that it has now the same denominator as the second fraction. And now you can see they have common denominators. And I will simply do what we did before. If two fractions are added and they have the same common denominator, we simply add the numerators. So in this case, this would be 17 over 24. We'll do it again with this fraction. Again, the approach is the same. We're going to have two fractions. The second fraction doesn't change because that's the largest one. So this, this stays as 5 over 18, but the first fraction is 1 over 6. And we have to change that so that the denominator will be 18. So ask ourselves the question, what must I do to 6 to turn it into an 18? And the answer is, I must multiply it times 3. If I multiply the denominator times 3, I must also multiply the numerator times 3. Otherwise, of course, the fraction is no longer of the same value. So now I can rewrite this as 3 over 18 plus 5 over 18 together that, f that makes 8 over 18. And since they're both even, I can then simplify that by dividing the numerator by 2 and dividing, oh, not, I divide the numerator by 2, so 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 18 divided by 2 is 9. And so the final answer in reduced form will be 4 divided by 9. Here's our third example, the same way again. The largest of the denominators is 45, so I'm going to have two denominators. The second fraction doesn't change. Uh, I should say I have two fractions. The second fraction doesn't change. I get 7 over 45, unchanged. But the first denominator, or the first fraction, will change. I start out with 6 over 15, and then I ask myself the question, what must I do to 15 to turn into 45? Another way to ask it is to say, how many times does 15 fit into 45 evenly? And the answer is 3, which means if I multiply 15 times 3, I get 45. Of course, if I multiply the denominator times 3, I must also multiply the numerator times 3. And now I can rewrite the two fractions as follows. The first fraction now becomes 18 over 45. And the sec second fraction stays the same as 7 over 45. And now that they're both over the same denominator, I can simply add the numerators, which gives me 25 over 45. And again, it looks like an, I can reduce that fraction because they both end in a 5. So 25 divided by 5 is 5. 45 divided by 5 is 9. So ultimately, this fraction reduces to 5 over 9. 
So what, what do we do when we have three fractions? Well, the method is exactly the same. If the other two, the smaller of the two denominators, evenly fit into the larger denominator, we employ the same technique, except now we need to use three fractions. So this becomes 8 over 10 plus 9 over 15. I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator, by some number. And then, of course, the third fraction doesn't change because it already has that common denominator that we're looking for. And let me put a line here so we don't get confused. So what do I do here? Well, I ask the question, how many times does 10 fit into 30? And the answer is three times, which means I'm going to multiply the denominator times three and the numerator times three. Here, 15 goes into 30 evenly twice, so I'm going to multiply the denominator times two, which means I must also multiply the numerator times two. Now you can see that if I multiply those out, I get the following. I get 24 over 30 plus 18 over 30 plus 13 over 30. So you can see that every one of these fractions are exactly the same as what, what I had before, just in a different form. Now they're over the same common denominator, which means I can add the numerators together. The denominator will be 30, and the numerators 24 plus 18, that's 34, that's 42, 52, or 55. Notice they, the number on top ends in a 5, the number in the bottom ends in a 0. That means they're both divisible by 5. I can divide the top number by 5 and get 11. I can divide the bottom, the denominator by 5, and get 6, which means that in reduced form, this becomes 11 over 6. And here again, I have three fractions. The largest denominator is 48. The other two evenly fit into that largest denominator. Notice the largest denominator doesn't have to be the last fraction. It could be anywhere. So this can then be written as 7 over 12, and I'm going to have to do something with the numerator and denominator, plus 5 over 48, that will remain the same, plus 9 over 16. Notice I left myself some room because I'm going to have to do something there to turn those into the proper denominators. Notice 12 goes into 48 exactly four times. I'm going to multiply the denominator by 4, and of course I must also multiply the numerator by 4. Then we can say that 16 goes into 48 exactly three times, so I'm going to multiply the denominator times 3, and I must also multiply the numerator times 3. So now I have three new fractions. So the first fraction becomes 28 over 48. The second fraction remains at 5 over 48. And the third fraction now becomes 27 over 48. Notice now all the fractions have the same denominator, so I can simply add the numerators. The denominator will be 48, and the numerators will be uh, 5 plus 27 is 32, 32 plus 28 is 60. Notice that they're both even, so I can divide both sides by 2, or the numerator and the denominator by 2. Actually, I can do better than that, but sometimes it's just easy to use 2. So 60 divided by 2 is 30. 48 divided by 2 is 24. So that means now my fraction becomes 30 over 24. And I can continue to reduce it. 30 divided by 2 is 15. And 24 divided by 2 is 12. So now my fraction is 15 over 12. And then it looks like I'm still not done because now they're both divisible by 3. So if I divide the numerator by 3, I get 5. If I divide the denominator by 3, I get 4, and so ultimately the fraction reduces all the way down to 5 over 4. We can probably have seen that that could have been accomplished by simply dividing the numerator by 12 and the denominator by 12. But you don't always see it immediately, and so sometimes you can just simply make the number smaller until you realize, okay, that's the final solution, or you just take it one step at a time. It doesn't really matter. So here you can see the technique again. If the smaller denominator fits evenly into the larger denominator. You ask yourself the question, how many times? Then you multiply that denominator by that number, and you do the same to the numerator to turn it into a new fraction such that the denominators are the same. And that's how we add fractions when the denominators are not the same, but all the smaller denominators fit evenly into the largest of the denominators. And that's how it's done.